proper pronunciation of his name, Davis Karashani Arenitwe. Exactly. Good evening. Thank you very much. And uh, it's a pleasure having you here. Good evening to you too. So, of course, always an honor to come and uh, be in the middle of a uh, distinguished uh, just sports journalist. So for me, it's an honor to be here. On the 24th of this very month, Uganda's yeah. national cricket side uh, will travel to Malaysia. Uh, six days later, uh, the ICC World uh, Cricket Division 4 yeah. uh, officially kicks off. I think let's start off by setting the stage uh, for both the cricket fans and those who haven't followed cricket probably for a while. What is this? What is the ICC Division 4 and what does this mean for Uganda's national cricket side? Well, uh, those that have been lost that have not been following the sport of cricket, uh, <laughs> The World Cricket League Division 4 is a very, very big event for, for the association as Uganda Cricket Association. But besides that, it, it gives the cricketers of the nation like Uganda mm. an opportunity to go and showcase their skills, showcase what they can deliver on the international circuit. So it's a massive event for Uganda. Mm. Uh, of course, we, sh we shall jump into the game itself and the games and, and how it's round robin and everything. Yeah. But I want to start off with you uh, at, at a very personal level. Former captain of the national side, um, see the beauty about the press box is we can hear all these rumors all over the place. And then when you come here, we ask them to yeah. you so you can say yes or no. We know you are captain. That's not a rumor. But there's a rumor that you're gunning for the C CEO job of the Uganda Cricket Association. Uh, and I'm saying rumor because I want us to hear it from you for the first time on the NTV press box. What is the story? I'm not too sure you like my response, but I will respond anyway. Mm. Uh, the problem with... Uh, there are two classes of people that I find a bit strange to find. Okay. Uh, one group is the politicians. The other one is the sports journalists. I find you guys <laughs> totally go off. Sometimes you miss, the, you miss the point by miles. Mm. I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm mm. here to talk about the Uganda cricket team. Mm and the Uganda Cricket Ladies team. So mm. my apologies, I may not be able to answer that question directly. Mm. I'll go straight into the national teams that are going to represent the nation. <laughs> but I have to give credit to him. He's answered like a real politician. <laughs> 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 Karachan has, uh, right. has given us the pure politician's reply. So a very simple question here on the TV press box. But first, before we talk about uh, the World Cricket Division 3 league uh, in yeah. Malaysia, uh, the team lives on the 24th, Robert Madoy has been our roving journalist this very week. So we sent him out to go and quickly set the scene for us. Robert. Not long is left before the ICC World Division 4 Cricket League balls off in Malaysia. Now, Uganda has prepared for that tournament by having a couple of trial tournaments. They went down to the subcontinent and played Qatar as well as uh, a series of, uh, of uh, Indian clubs. They also had a bilateral series here against uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which has helped you know, cricket fans to sketch a, a portrait of how the team will look like. Right now here with me is uh, Dennis Musali. He opened uh, the batting for the under-19 cricket team uh, when they played the, the World Cup in 2004 and uh, 2006. And it would be a good starting point to ask you, you know, what kind of openers do you think uh, uh, coach Steve Ticolo is going to use um, uh, when, when the team is in Malaysia? Uh, there's a change at the top of the order. Usually, Odna, we're in the Division 3 tournament that was in Kampala, we had uh, Ham Kayondo opening with Arthur Chove, but there's a change now. Uh, the team captain, Roger Mkasa, has stepped up to lead the team from the front. He will be opening the batting with uh, a youngster who was just coming to the side, Simon Sesazi. So, uh, so far at the top, there's a really new opening pair for Uganda. And both of them, similar, a bit similar in style. Uh, Sesazi is left-handed and uh, Roger is right-handed. A combination that most teams use in world cricket. You no, know, there is a chance of a wicket falling early. So who comes in at one drop? Uh, at one drop is uh, Ham Kayondo. Ham Kayondo has been uh, opening, was uh, an opening partner for Arthur Chove. But I know Ham at one drop and opening batting, the difference is more or less the similarity. So yes. he can do a steady job. You believe, you know, Shazad has uh, the skill set, you know, to bat through. Uh, the innings because coming in at four you'd expect him to do that. Uh, yeah, true that. Uh, of all the top four, I believe all of them, maybe I would say Roger and uh, Simon because of their nature of play which is explosive, they, have, uh, they, they are susceptible to getting out earlier than the rest. But between Ham and Shazad, I'm sure that we can both carry us up to the end until the at worst 45th over. Okay, and five and six, uh, whom are you slotting in five there? Five and six, uh, there's a the vice captain, Brian Masaba, and uh, Deus Muhumza. Uh, very, very good all rounders. They give you a lot of energy in the field. Uh, uh, plus, a bowling advantage, Brian has some leg spinners, and Deus has proven to be good when trying to break partnerships with this bowling. So, you need to have both of them in the middle, and uh, both of them have, have really improved on their batting. I'm sure they can contribute a very good 30 or 40 and 
this can be the difference between winning and losing a match. So the, the Dels, Moms and Brian Masaba, those are the guys in the middle to hold the middle before we can send in what we usually call our Russians at the end. Okay. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the Russians, who is uh, your wicket keeper? Who our wicket comes? keeper, there is also a new change. Uh, the selectors have sent out a, cloud, a loud message that they are moving on. Uh, we've been stuck in the past. We have not had anyone. We relied on Lawrence for a long time, but I, I mean it is time to move on. So Fred Achelam is in the team. He's I'm sure the spinners would want you know uh, a polished wicket keeper to stand you know behind the wicket. So which spinners are these? That, that... Uh, Sen Risonyon has stood out with his left arm orthodox. So he will be the man to lead our spinning uh, spinning department. For a very long time, it has been uh, either the former captain Karashan and Franco, but uh, Senyon, I think, has carried from both of them with his experience. Now he can lead our bowling attack. Senyon will be doing that with, uh, I'm certain in the playing 11, should be, I'm thinking it should be uh, Ifan Afridi, uh, who we know very well. Afridi is not your ordinary spinner, he's very, very mysterious. You don't know what's coming. Uh, it's either the quick one or the knuckleball or the spinner. So. Uh, then the other bowler, we'll talk of um, Bilal Hassan. Bilal Hassan bowled some, uh, some very nice pace that we've been missing for a very long time. Then you have in there, of course, the experienced Charles Waiswa with his control. Uh, there's the younger Kenneth Waiswa, but who I think will be deputizing for the other two. And uh, there is an exciting all rounder called uh, Riyashia. Because of his Pakistani roots, he has some reverse, uh, reverse swing bowling, so, which will be crucial towards the back end of the innings. Sometimes you can concede up to 100 runs if you're not careful in the last 10 overs. Okay. Yeah. So, there you had it. Uh, you know, Uganda, uh, very decent team. They are going to come up against uh, what you would say, you know, getting backwaters, the likes of Jazzy, the likes of Vanuatu. Uh, the question is, you know, will this 11, you know, that, that uh, Dennis has just walked us through, will it be, you know, the exact 11 that Steve Ticolo will, uh, you know, turn to in Malaysia? we we'll wait to see that. Well, I got th thank you very much uh, to Robert Mado. He's been speaking to Dennis Musali about his starting 11 for the national cricket side. Like we said, they're heading off to Malaysia. Uh, David, Davis Karashan is still with us in the building. Davis, uh, I think let's start off with what Mado has just been talking about with Dennis. Uh, Musali, you look at his starting 11. Uh, what is your quick thought about that one? Uh, my quick thought is uh, I think uh, Steve Ticola will enjoy uh, the kind of resources he has in his team this time around. I think uh, the guys that are in the side right now offer a lot more than wh what happened uh, last, last year. Mm. I think the new inclusions, the Bilal Hassan, uh, guys like Riazad Khan, are meant to understand they might be a late changer. Shazad may not be available for the tournament, which will bring in Ronak. Ronak is a wicket keeping option and provides a lot of balance batting in the middle of the inning. So I, I feel uh, the happiest of this, of this lot should be Steve Ticolo. He has mm. ample resources. Uh, uh, before I let Mwangusha and Asha in for the questions, I really want to ask I mean, you've been. Uh, with the side. We've been with yeah. Ghana cricket for a very long time. Uh, you've watched the teams develop, you've watched teams go out, whether yeah. perform well or not perform to the best of expectations. What, what do you make of the development of Ugandan cricket? And ahead of this team's trip, what yeah. excites you about this crop of players? Uh, for me, the fact that uh, I think this time around the selectors have gone with a good blend of uh, youth and experience. I think they've they have retained the fact that uh, there are some experienced players that have won games for us before. Guys like Frank and Subuga, they've been retained there. The fact that they've also brought in youngsters like uh, Cesar Simon, I think uh, they've rewarded his hard work and his performances. So I think the selectors have shown a good direction. Uh, besides that, I feel uh, now is a good time for, for Uganda cricket to try and probably turn another page, mm. uh, look at a few younger players. And uh, these, are, these are the guys that are playing right now. I think when you, when you factor in the, the players that are going to Malaysia, you feel uh, you get a strong feeling that Uganda should be having ample resources, at least the top 20 good players for probably the next tournament. Uh, Davis, uh, yeah. of course, before we, we, we collapsed and to fall into Division 4. Uh, Let's, move on. Let's move on. Moving yes, on. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm building up the question. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, ahead, of, ahead of that tournament, of yeah. course, the preparations <coughs> were a bit ashamed, not the best. Yeah. And of course, the result was not deceptive. Finally, when it came through, and we went down. Yeah. Now we've had, of course, tours. We've, we've played Rwanda, we've been to Qatar, we've gone to India, mm -hmm. and of course the bilateral series, which uh, yeah. we lost 2 1 uh, thanks to Saudi Arabia and the rain. <laughs> 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 yeah, yes. Uh, and uh, looking at these, you know, preparations, that's, that's uh, yeah. quite some games in the last six months yeah. or so. So, 
how do you feel? What's the general feeling? You know, factoring in the preparations ahead yeah. of the Malaysian tour, uh, the Malaysian Championship, and then the way we play the games we've had. How how do you feel about the whole preparation thing? I think for me, uh, the cricket the cricket cranes suffer the same uh, problem like any other Ugandan sport. Lack mm. of uh, enough support from probably government from uh, other corporate bodies. So we our our preparations have generally been a bit of uh, short. They've been they've come short on the short end. But generally speaking, this this time around, I feel that the players have gotten some exposure what they might have needed. They've had a chance to test out a few combinations. So mm -hmm. going into the tournament, fortunately, we don't have any injuries that are carrying into Malaysia. So I want to be, I want to believe that the guys should be good to go. This time it has been all right. Um, David, um, from the time I started watching uh, Ugandan cricket, I that's don't last year. <laughs> 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 I Proceed. really don't remember the last okay. time I, I I you know I saw a team without uh, Frank. Uh, Lawrence, Arthur Chauvet, you know, these are some of the core names, of course yeah. yourself. Um, when you see the current team, do you yeah. think that, you know, for example, Brian Masaba is going to use this opportunity to literally step up and uh, get all the other upcoming ones, you know, like Bilal and say, guys, yeah. you know, this is your time to shine. You have an opportunity in, in front of you. And now let's push uh, to, to the top. Yeah, I think uh, starting with the way you started your, your question, I think uh, you had fallen in that Kab Kabura gr group of guys <laughs> that uh, nev never really get the point. Mm. For me, the point oh. here is the fact that uh, new players are getting an opportunity. Mm. Guys like Sesazi, I think that's where the focus should be. Sesazi is getting in, mm. Roger Mukasa is going to captain the side, a very good side. Guys like Bilal Khan are coming into the side, Afridi, guys like Brian, a vice captain, but now he, they're going to be forced to step up. For me, I feel that is where the focus needs to be. I, I really don't know why you're throwing stones <laughs> my way throughout the show. Uh, but let me, let me quickly ask you, I mean, you look yeah. at the opposition in Malaysia, Vanuatu, Bermuda, Malaysia, yeah. Denmark, Jersey. Again, you've played cricket uh, at the highest level. You know yeah. what happens in most of these countries. What kind of opposition are we coming up against? Uh, just, just to be sure, uh, I, want to, I want to guarantee you guys that uh, these, these teams are good enough. Mm. These teams are not there by accident. Uh, a couple of these players uh, play in uh, the Australian League, the English League couple of these guys, well, first of all, you're going to play against the Malaysian side that has a lot of Asian players. So don't be fooled when you see a fixture, Uganda versus Vanuatu, and you think these are poorly farmers yes, from somewhere. Yes. No, this is actually pretty decent cricketers, so expect a very, very tough competition. There's something I've always wanted. I, I always ask this uh, every time we host someone yeah. from any sports discipline, because for me, I think it's very important for continuity, for us yeah. moving forward. And that's a developmental Now part. you're getting the point, Andrew. Yes, sir. <laughs> proceed, proceed, Andrew. Can My apologies. I'm the host of this show. My apologies. I can easily it's good <laughs> I'm in between you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I've always been interested in the developmental side of yeah. the game. Um, and I ask this because <coughs> the statistics, again, suggest you've played at 219 World Cups. Yeah. How happy are you with us moving forward, continuity in, in, in Uganda cricket? And that's that mainly because uh, everyone talks about funding, everyone yeah. talks about facilities in different sports yeah. disciplines. How happy are we with cricket? My opinion, uh, I feel uh, we, we stagnated after we played our second under-19 World Cup. I feel uh, the association probably didn't do enough. We haven't played in the under-19 World Cup for the last, I think, 12 years. Mm. If our statistics take me to get, get I'm right on that. Mm. I just feel as an association, we probably stagnated. We didn't put in as much as the other associate teams were doing. Uh, I also worry about other sports like, let's say, netball that are doing well right now. I feel uh, they, they need to make sure they they hold on to the fact that they need to develop younger players and expose those guys. So I feel Uganda cricket right now probably, they need to put their hands up and decide that they need to take up uh, the development program pretty seriously. You, say, you, say, you, say, you sent out a tweet bashing the press box on, wh where's the debut? Say more? Oh, yeah, you sent out <laughs> yeah. a tweet. He sent out a tweet bashing this show, uh, saying that we didn't talk about cricket a couple of weeks ago. And what I really picked from that is not your tweet. But, but it's, it's a general concern that has been going on. Do you guys feel at some point there's focus on other sports which might not be winning that many medals out of the country, and maybe some sports are not given that much attention. Because when you bash us, we kind of took the back seat. It's, it's actually always very good to hear things like those come out of your, your mouth, mm. you guys that are the journalists. I just feel uh, sometimes you throw light on areas that really don't, don't, don't need that much light. Mm. I felt at that time a, a team like the Pirates had just won themselves their first ever season, yeah. rugby season. I felt uh, their, their sports, the, the national women's team, are the continental champions mm. but i just feel teams teams like those have struggled to get full recognition from uh, sponsors from the press you guys that are supposed to be actually at the forefront of trying yeah. to market this but we're this doing sport. well now uh, now now you're now you're I moving along. you're coming you're getting in class this has well represented all the disgruntled viewers <laughs> <laughs> that's the majority just there so is, you know <laughs> there is have a question for yeah. you um unlike the other sports you mentioned uh, netball and whatever yeah. football they get a lot of um, uh, money from uh, fifa even cricket, you get money from uh, the ICC, yes. of course, depending on, you on know, how you the perform. level you yes. are and how you perform. So the more you go up, the more money you yeah. get. Um, do you think that, you know, 
maybe UCA has used this money in a, a, an appropriate way that explains maybe our performance in a certain way? Where That's, are the priorities? It's, it's a yes or no kind of, uh, I would give you a yes or no kind of answer. I feel that some parts we have, we have tried, the association has poorly tried. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt uh, some, some, some resource was injected into the national team to try and push them forward. Uh, you, one could argue that other, is other parts of the cricket fraternity did not receive as much. Uh, people say that the ladies game has not received as much as they probably should have. Mm -hmm. The fact that they are continental champions. So I feel uh, you see as an association, uh, they are the kind of association that would sit back, do a bit of uh, a SWOT analysis, see where they probably went wrong, see what they can change. I want to believe uh, UCA now getting a, a new CEO should be, should be taking steps in the right direction. Uh, uh, and talking yes. about uh, the women, yeah. they are playing uh, a friendly game on Friday to try and... Uh, yeah, it's uh, a fundraising uh, event. Yeah. Fundraise yes. money. These are continental champions going yes. to play a World Cup uh, qualifier, qualifier in the uh, Netherlands, you yes. Know. Um, do you think that, you know, uh, we are not really putting our priorities right? Like. I I totally agree with you. I think you, you just hit the, the, the snake right on the head. I feel, uh, again, it's just my personal feeling. I feel sometimes we miss the point big time. Mm. This is a continental champion, as you said. I feel that this, they need to get as much support, not just in resources of funding, but as much media coverage. That will certainly help the <coughs> corporate sponsors coming on board. So the ladies have a fundraising event on the, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Just fundraise, get some money for... They're going to Zimbabwe for a pre-tournament uh, warm-up. Mm -hmm. Then they go to the World Cup qualifiers in the Netherlands in July. All right, right, send us those reactions. Uh, before yeah. I go to Mandrum Angusha, send us those reactions. And uh, that is on Twitter. The hashtag is NTV Pressbook. So we can answer as many as we can. Send them directly to Karashani, and I'm sure he will have <laughs> as many answers as he can. Uh, at, at the end of the day, no, we, shall, we are not going to listen to his threat. We shall ask him some <laughs> personal questions on the show. Uh, he's trying to divert our attention. But Mangusha, you something to ask uh, Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, re-emphasize uh, the funding. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we have teams, uh, we've had teams uh, at, uh, in Gold Coast, uh, yes. Commonwealth, uh, you know, having all the limelight because Uganda won some medals, yes. and then you have the Continental Champions fundraising to go and play in a World uh, Cup qualifier. In a World Cup qualifier. Yeah. And of course, this fundraising uh, as well caters for the, the games in uh, Zimbabwe. Yes. Where we're going to play yes. uh, 60, 20 games. Yes, they're going to play T20 games. Uh, so, so again, that brings uh, uh, to, to the priority issues. And uh, these, these, these are the continental champions, like we're saying. So as yeah. UCA, I'm going back to the question that you deflated earlier, <laughs> because you talked of, uh, you know, the with new CEO coming in, mm. and then UCA, <laughs> and That's then a we're good talking question. funding. Here so we go again. why are you exactly... Okay, I'm now addressing it to you. Why is She Cricket Cranes fundraising yeah. for an international tour and an international qualifier? Well, I'm not too sure if I'm the right person to actually address that, that question. But uh, in my opinion, I actually feel uh, the, the, the ladies receive a certain amount of money from the ICC, which is split by, by uh, the, the UCA Federation. So mm. the ladies' amount of money that comes in, in my opinion, I think they actually use it for the ladies. But it's not as much for the men's for the men's side so you find that uh, the activities and the resources that are spent on the national men's national team n unfortunately never meet the ones that are spent on the ladies side okay I, I, let's just like go with the let's just go with the flow let's just go with the flow it's friday right uh, where we are playing uh, the, the the ladies Abagurusi. are playing Abagurusi, yes yeah. mm. uh, who includes Those are the uh, elders, unfortunately yeah. innocent in <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, all, all you're saying is now we should call out the public uh, on Friday to go and watch the game and give back to the ladies so that they travel, right? Yeah, those that can make it actually, that would be fantastic if they can be there, watch them. And actually, for, I would imagine them, what UC is trying to get out there is the fact that people are aware that uh, they're, they're probably walking around knowing taxis with the national, with the continental yes. champions. Yes. I think that is the bigger mileage for, for the ladies' team. Um, um, Davis, I'd like to say something about um, women's sport generally mm. yeah. because. Um, in many sports disciplines, it's easier for a women's national team to yeah. qualify for a big tournament because yeah. there are fewer teams playing in the qualifiers or something like that. I don't understand why it's rocket science for federations and nations to realize this. Like, if you invest in this women's team yeah. and, and we do well, for example, we prepare well in Zimbabwe, yeah. we will, you know, do well at, at, the, at the global uh, qualifier. I remember I met someone from uh, Papua New Guinea yes. last year in, I think, September. Um, and this person was telling me their team was already playing friendly games. This is September last year, you know. Yeah. So to think that other, you know, countries already prepared and they're playing, you know, games across the world to prepare for this tournament, where does that leave us? 
I think that is a page uh, Federation is at least like Uganda Cricket Association are probably turning. They're looking like uh, they want to take the direction of trying to uh, get hold of the women's game. The ladies, the girls cricket week starts next week, mm -hmm. if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm right. It mm -hmm. starts next week. So I feel uh, Uganda Cricket Association, you could say, uh, at the forefront of looking to add advantages to the ladies' sport. Uh, Karashani, I have two final questions. I want us to wrap this. I yeah, also yeah. give you an opportunity to have your final say. Uh, both of them are personal questions. Uh, the first one is from Madoi. Madoi made sure I asked this on air. Uh, because I think he's not, <laughs> you've not been picking his phone calls apparently. Uh, but he says, are you finished? Are you finished with the national side? Or should the cricket fans out there hope, beyond hope, that you could be coming back to the national fold? Thanks. Okay. That's a good question, eh? Yeah? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I wouldn't mind answering something like that in <laughs> off air, off air. But anyway, I'll, I'll take, I'll take it. Shift, yeah. mm. um, right now, I actually do not have as much time as I probably would have for maybe five or ten years ago. I don't have as much time, unfortunately, with work. I'm studying again. Uh, so, unfortunately, I can't offer as much time and... Um, commitment that might be required mm. for the national team. So mm. the best I can do is uh, probably leave leave it out there if, if I feel I'm probably good enough or I'm in the shape that can maybe ma make help me make a difference to the national side. If I feel there is something that I can add to the national side, I'll, I'll leave the door open until if that happens, I'll, I'll come back and play for the game. For Uganda. Okay, and no one has talked about this on the show. I think I should bring it up. Uh, are you applying for the CEO job? And <laughs> that's what it's trying to be. <laughs> that's what it's, but I think, I? I think that, that I think is done and dusted. I think they they probably done. The interviews were done. I mm. think uh, the association is probably going to take uh, a new direction. Mm. But generally speaking, I think that is something you shouldn't. But but, but but let me ask you something, Davis. And for me, this is the interesting part. And yeah. whether you're going to take on the CEO's job or not, at least you think about administration yeah. in in Ugandan sport. Well, what are the major loopholes? And let's not only talk cricket now. Yeah. Let's talk across. What are the major loopholes? You've traveled the world. You've seen how different federations develop different sides. You've seen professionalism at a different... What are the major loopholes here? If you could talk to all the administrators out there. I think many administrators, unfortunately, are not qualified to do the job. Uh, I just find uh, they lack a lot of the business acumen about sport. Sport is a multi-billion dollar business. I feel many administrators, they miss that point. Mm. Guys get into the, probably the job. Guy knows he's going to be in office for probably two years. Look to he looks to make or get as much money or swindle as much money as he can, and mm. he goes back into whatever he needs to do. So I feel uh, many administrators lack the competencies to actually take on the job. Uh, let's wrap this up. We've got to go for a quick break. Uh, yeah. Davis Karashan, former captain of the national side. You, I have one one last one for him. Okay, he just talks about <laughs> retirement and then coming out of retirement. Yeah. Uh, do you believe in retirement? I believe if if the time is if the time actually comes and you feel uh, you can't <laughs> add any value, if you feel maybe it's time for guys to move on you feel someone you've identified a youngster that can probably feel in your your boots i feel it's it's only the right thing to do the honorable thing is to let that youngster develop and take the role um davis two questions one you i know that you literally uh, mentored brian masaba yeah. who is uh, uh, when he was assistant captain to you yeah. um what can you say about him in terms of his leadership skills what, what do you see in him I think Brian is good enough, uh, not just as a player, but especially as a leader. He's a, he's a thinker of the game of cricket. Uh, I always used to believe, and I always used to tell the guys, uh, you need, you'd rather have eight thinkers of the game of cricket than have eight talented cricketers, mm. which I think Brian, that is something Brian totally admits. I think, uh, in my opinion, I think he's one of the guys that will, he's one of those very underrated players, but his, his importance in the side is, is beyond measure, mm. my opinion. And another serious question, um, your birthday is later this week, um, <laughs> where's the party? <laughs> Okay, you were talking about a break, Andrew. You are talking about a break. <laughs> yes, so now is a good time. Now. <laughs> uh, but your birthday is later this week. How old will you be? Uh... Andrew talked about a break. Now, okay. But what's your final word though before we leave? Uh, really, my final word is uh, I think uh, the, the team will do well. I believe the team will do well in this Division Division 4 tournament. I hope they can do well. Go Besides that one, go to Rwanda, do well in the T20s. Uh, uh, maybe qualify, go into the Division 3 that is later slated for later this year. I feel that will give us another opportunity to play international cricket, to mm. bring in other new guys, the youngsters, the Bakunzis, the Kankwasa Franks, to allow youngsters to get to play a bit more international cricket. So my appeal really is to the guys out there to come out, support the guys in any way they can, and not just cricket, but support actually sports that are actually making a difference and putting your gun out there. There you go. Thank you very much, uh, Davis Karashani. We really appreciate your presence on the show today, and we hope Uganda does very, very well. I also hope you, you stay you stay with the game <laughs> at a very administrative level. Uh, there you go. First of all, we've got to apologize because our special guest on the show for the social media side has not made it to the show today. He's told us everything to do with traffic jam. Uh, we are looking out on the streets. We don't see any traffic jam, but we, sh we shall let it go. But later still on the show, we shall be having all your social media reactions. Actually, that means we have more reaction from social media. All the questions uh, to Karashan will be uh, answered by him. He's on Twitter as well, so he'll be 
reacting to some of those uh, those questions. Plus, we shall be talking the Commonwealth Games when we come back for the third and final segment. This is the press box.